Hello, it's me. I'm Hannah. I brought the uh, Adult Bible Study Guide. This uh, is the oh, third quarter of 2022. Title is In the uh, Crucible with Christ. I gonna, it has uh, 13 lessons. Uh, I'm going to read the lesson A, Seeing the Invisible. Yeah, the crucible, or, or first we're going to know about this uh, defi definition of the crucibles that comes. This de de definition also gives us a uh, helper insight into what happens in our spiritual lives. We will highlight some reasons we may we may certainly find ourselves under pressure and experiencing tests in places in which circumstances cause us to change, develop, and grow in character. This will help to give us an awareness of what God is doing in our lives so that when we enter a crucible, we will have an idea of how to respond. And this word, the word used for fiery ordeal or fiery trial uh, comes from another Greek word and it means a burning in other places. It is translated a furnace. This experience of suffering for our faith could uh, therefore be considered a smel smelting process, the process of the crucible. The, uh, and the we we just uh, 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 can summarize the there are extreme heat. At what we have learned about gas crucibles uh, in three ways. Uh, first, gas extreme heat is to destroy not us but but our sin. Second, gas extreme heat is not to make us miserable but to make us pure as we were created to be. Third, God's care for us through all things is constant and tender. He will never leave us alone, no matter what happens to us. So let's read lesson eight, seeing the, the invisible. Read for this week's study, Romans 8, 28 through 39, John 14, 1 through 14, Ephesians 1, 18 through 23, Isaiah uh, 40, 27, 31. Memory text, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Hebrews 11, 27. The definition of faith in the book of Hebrews is always changing. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Hebrews 11.1 1. How can we be sure about what we do not see? Yet, this is exactly what Moses illustrates in our memory verse. He pre, uh, persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Hebrews 11, 27. It is even more challenging to realize that we are called to see him who is invisible, not simply when times are good, but especially when everything is going wrong. For this, we need a face, a uh, Christ-like faith that must be shaped by the truth about God and God's kingdom. The truth about our Father's goodness, the power in the name of Jesus, the power of the resurrection, and the compassion of God are essential truths that will enable us to stand strong when we are in the crucible and may be tempted to doubt everything. The we get a glance what truth about God can help sustain us through even the worst situations? Sunday, our Father seeks extravagance. Extravagance. If God really loved me, He would certainly do, certainly do like for me. 
uh, I wonder how many times that thought has uh, flickered through our minds. We look at our circumstances and uh, that begin to wonder whether God really loves us because if he really did, the things would be different. There are two rationales rationales that often lead us to doubt God's goodness. First, when we have a burning desire in our hearts and minds for something that we believe is good, the idea that God might want something different for us may seem ridiculous. Second, we may doubt God's goodness because our experience clashes with what we believe. If something looks good or feels good or sounds good or tastes good, then it must be good. And so we get angry with God when we can't have it. This is where faith comes into play. Faith comes into action precisely at those times we are tempted to doubt God and His goodness. Romans 8, 28 through 39 is a powerful passage, passage that describes the goodness of God toward us. What reasons can you find in the text that can guard our minds against doubting God's goodness? In Romans 8, 32, there is an important piece of logic that is extremely helpful in guarding us from becoming overwhelmed by our circumstances. If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing <clears throat> our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? The message, how could we possibly think that God would send Jesus to die for us and then turn mean and stingy? This means that the truth of God's generosity to us, seen in the death of Christ, must have a stronger impact in our thinking than all of the doubts that the crucible may generate inside us. How is it possible for a truth, God's goodness, to have a, have a more powerful effect on you than your doubts? Spend some time meditating on the truth that God has given Jesus to die in your place. And that this is incredible generosity uh, uh, continues in a thousand different ways for you today. What does this for your face? In the Monday, in the name of Jesus, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 14, 14. Jesus was not going to be with the disciples much longer. The one, the one who had been their support and encouragement was going to heaven, and the disciples were beginning to feel confused and powerless. But though the disciples would not be able to see him, physically any longer. Jesus gave them a remarkable promise. Read John 14, 1 through 14. According to verse 13 and 14, Jesus promises to do for us anything that we ask in his name. Because of this, we almost always add on to the end of our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. When we say this, what do we normally think it means? What does Jesus mean when he encourages us to pray like this? What clues are there in these verses that help us to understand the point he's making? When our request is in the name of Jesus, we can be certain that the whole machinery of heaven is at work on our behalf. We may not see the angels work, working all around us, but they are sent from the throne of heaven in the name of Jesus to fulfill our requests. Sometimes when we pray in the name of Jesus, we open our eyes and expect everything to be different around us. But it 
all looks the same. However, while the power of God may come with dramatic effect, effect that when Jesus calmed the storm, it also may come in quietness unnoticed. As when the power of God sustained Jesus in Gethsemane, something dramatic may not certainly happen, but that doesn't mean that God is not at work for us. Read John 14, 1 through 14 again. As you read, imagine that Jesus is talking directly to you face to face. What hope and encouragement can you draw from this promise? At the same time, ask yourself what things in my life could be standing in the way of having these promises prepared for me? What changes must I propose? purpose in my heart to make. Tuesday, the power of the re re resurrection. The resurrection address addresses the problem of human powerlessness. When we think about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we often think about how the death of Jesus was the event that made us legally ride with God. And that, of course, is true. However, the resurrection adds a specific dimension to salvation. The resurrection of Jesus is meaningful not just because it shows us that one day we will, we will be resurrected as well. The resurrection placed Jesus at the right hand of the Father in a position of power and authority. This resurrection power is the same power that God makes available for us today. Today, in Ephesians 1, 18 through 23, Paul talks about the power of God. What does this text teach us about the power of the resurrection? What hope and promises for yourself can you find in these verses? Paul is praying that the Ephesians understand the, a few things that can be understood properly only with divine help. Number one, that there is the hope of transformation and an eternal future to which Jesus has called us. And two, that we understand the power that was manifested in our behalf. Paul then tries to describe how as Astonishing, astonishing this power is. The power that is available to us today is the same power that resurrected Jesus not just out of the ground that back and back to life, but to the place of power at the pa Father's right hand. But Paul, Paul doesn't stop there. The resurrection didn't simply give Jesus just any sort of power, it gave him the power to rule and provide every possible thing his people could ever need for all eternity. Make a list of wood, the areas in your life where you need the power of the resurrected Jesus. Jesus, when you have finished the pray that this power will be applied to all these areas of need. At the same time, what can you do better? What choices can you make that can allow this power to work more freely in your life? Wednesday, to carry all our worry, there is a plague that some people have in their homes that reads, why pray when you can worry? It makes us laugh because we know how often we worry rather than come to God and give Him our concerns. Someone once, that, someone once said that when our life becomes all tied up, we should give it to God and let Him untie the knots. How God must long to do this for us. Yet amazingly, we manage to hang on to our problems until we are about to snap. Why do we wait until we are desperate before we go to the Lord? Read First Peter 5, 7. Peter is quoting 
quoting from Psalm 55, 22, was the basic message here for us. See also Matthew 6, 25 through 33. It is a very simple text. There is no secret hidden in it, and it means exactly what it says. To, to cast means to do just do that, to throw, to give away, so that what is causing the aching and the concern no longer has any connection to you. But, of course, our burdens are not thrown just anywhere. Our worry does not disappear into a void. It is given to our Father in heaven who promises to sort, sort it out. That's what Jesus is telling us in the verses in Matthew. The problem in doing this is not that it's hard. Rather, it's, it's that it just seems too easy, too good, too good to be true. Anxiety is caused by all sorts of, sorts of things. It could be due to pre pressure, pressure from work. Unexpected criticism, feeling that we are unwanted or unloved, health or financial worries, feeling that we are not good enough for God, or believing that we are not forgiven. Whatever the reasons are, one reason we hang on to our problems is that we think we can sort them out better than anyone else can. But Peter urges us to reconsider any such idea. The reason we don't have to worry is that God cares. But does God still care enough to intervene when a divorce is looming or we feel totally useless? The Bible says that He cares enough to transform any situation. What are things that cause you worry now, however legitimate, legitimate they are, however troublesome they are? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Maybe our biggest problem is that even though we believe that God knows about it and can fix it, we don't believe that we, He will resolve it the way we, we, would, we would like it resolved. Dwell on that last point and ask yourself how true it is in your own life. Thursday, still faithful when God cannot be seen. To think that no one cares about what is happening to us is very unpleasant, pleasant. but to think that God does not know or care about us can be most distressing to the Mm, to the Judean, Judeans exiled in Babylon, God did not seem to care much about their situation. They were still exiled, still feeling abandoned by God because of their sin. But Isaiah speaks words of comfort to them, God, because of their sin. But yeah. But uh, Isaiah speaks words of comfort to them. Isaiah 40, Isaiah 40 is a beautiful passage in which Isaiah speaks so tenderly to the people about their God. He tends his flock li like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leaves those that have young, Isaiah 40, 11, but after so long, the exiles were thinking, where are you, O Lord? We can't see any evidence that you are still there or care. Read Isaiah 40, 27 through 31. In what ways does Isaiah describe God? How is this description of God meant to answer their belief that my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Isaiah 40, 27. Another group of people who might have considered that their way was hidden from God is found in the book of Esther. In this book, God is not mentioned even once. However, the whole story is an unfolding drama of 
God's intervention to save his people from an irrevocable irre irre law to have them destroyed. Not only does this story describe events of the past, but it also symbol symbolizes the symbolizes a time in the future when God's people will again be persecuted and a law again will be introduced for their destruction. Revelation 13, 15. Can you imagine how easy it would be to conclude that if such terrible circumstances existed, God must surely have this de deserted his people? But we are not to fear the same God who saved these chosen ones in the story of Esther will save them again in the final crisis. We have read how Isaiah described God to the exiles. How would you describe God to people who felt that God had disappeared and, and had abandoned them? How would you teach them to see through the through the eyes of faith and not be dependent on what they see around them with their human eyes? Friday, further study read Ellen G. White in the days of Queen Esther, page 598 through 606 in Prophets and Kings. Has not God said he would give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? And is not the spirit of real, true, actual guide? Some men seem afraid to take God at his word, as though it would be presumption, presumption in them. They pray for the Lord to teach us and yet are afraid to credit the pleaded word of God and believe we have been taught of him so long as we come to our Heavenly Father humbly and with a spirit to be taught, willing and anxious to learn why should we doubt God's fulfillment of his own promise. You must not for a moment doubt him and dishonor him thereby. When you have sought to know his will, your part in the, in the operation with God is to believe that you will be led and guided and blessed in the doing of his will. We may mistrust ourselves lest we misinterpret his teachings, but make even this a uh, subject of prayer and, and trust him, still trust him to the, uh, to the uttermost, that his Holy Spirit will lead you to interpret or write his plans and the working of his providence. Ellen G. White, Manuscript. Uh, release volume 6 page 225 faith grows strong by coming in conflict with uh, doubts and uh, opposing influence the, the experience gained in these trials is of more value than the most costly jewels Ellen G. White Testimonies for the Church volume 3 page 555 there are uh, four uh, Discussion questions, discussion questions, you know. Uh, number one, as a class, talk about the kinds of things we believe in that we do not see, things that we know are real yet are beyond our sight. How can this help us understand what it means to see him who is invisible? Two, discuss the final question found at the end of Wednesday's study. How often do, you, do we find ourselves in the situation? What can we do that will better enable us to trust that the Lord's way in is the best, even if it's not what we want? Number three, if faith grows strong by coming in conflict with doubts and opposing influence, and this leads to something extremely valuable or more value than the most costly jewels, how should this shape the way we look at such conflicts? Number four, most of us have been have seen people, even 
fellow Christians in situations in which, at least from our perspective, the outcome was so horrible, the worst thing we imagined happened despite the prayers and best efforts. How do we understand this in light of what we have been studying? Yeah, so the... Uh, let's pray the uh, the Lord's prayer, which the Lord gave for the for the world on this earth until He just coming again on this earth for you and me. So let's pray the Lord's prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hi. Uh, yeah. Okay. I want to say about the yeah, extreme heat, extreme heat. Uh, it just uh, from the extreme heat, heat melt down to the yeah, the crucial part. So uh, it's like it doesn't need uh, the extreme heat, but for you and me, he the deity. So we just. Uh, uh, be like, be like Jesus. Yeah. Let's see you on uh, lesson nine.